It is believed by many that approximately 445,000 years ago, ancient astronauts from another planet in the cosmos landed on Earth looking for gold. The 14 tablets of Lord Enki are embellished with details of the history of the Anunnaki. These 14 tablets of Lord Enki also provide an overview of the emergence of life. It is also mentioned in the tablets of Lord Enki that how civilization came into existence on Earth. These ancient astronauts landed on one of the Earth's seas and they set up a Raidu home in the faraway. As per the translations and transcriptions of author and researcher Zakaria Sitchin, the exploratory mission commenced on Earth turned into a full-fledged mission where the Anunnaki established operative centers on Earth, the Moon and even Mars. Gradually, the Anunnaki went short of manpower, so they employed genetic engineering to fashion prehistoric workers as known as Homo sapiens. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Genesis 1 ratio 26 There is a lot of skepticism present when the Anunnaki is discussed and many reject the idea that ancient astronauts called the Anunnaki landed on Earth thousands of years ago before written history. However, various researchers and theologians have recognized Garden of Eden, the Great Flood, the Tower of Babel are specified in ancient texts written down thousands of years ago in ancient Sumeria by the ancient Sumerians. The ancient Sumerians assert, that they extracted their knowledge of distant past from the teachings and writings of the Anunnaki, the first tablet of Lord Enki. The first tablet out of the 14 tablets of Lord Enki narrates about the atomic war. Chapter 1.1 The first tablet of Lord Enki explains that seems to us an atomic war on Earth between the Anunnaki. The evil and catastrophic wind is specified as a radioactive cloud that kills everyone in its path, gods and mankind. Interestingly, it has been said in the tablet that it is the worst thing to happen since the deluge. Chapter 1.2 The Anunnaki home planet Nibiru is mentioned in the second chapter of the first tablet. They seem to think they came to life from what our evolutionists believe as primordial soup. Although it is impossible for us, they believe that they can. It talks about the planet's thick atmosphere and vegetation. The cycles of the planet around the sun with the hot and cold periods is also mentioned. During the cold weather, the planet's inner heat keeps it warm. Conflicts began that ended up in the use of what we consider atomic bombs. It destroyed their planet. Then peace was made and kingship was established for the whole planet. Chapter 1.3 This tablet of Lord Enki narrates the kingship hierarchy on Nibiru. It states about the marriage of the king and he even married his brother's daughter. Chapter 1.4 This tablet suggests that the Anunnaki home planet was having trouble with their atmosphere. The answer to this problem as per the tablet is finally powdered gold in the upper atmosphere to do a repair. This decision was not made until a fight among them ended up in the killing of the king. Chapter 1.5 This tablet mentions the Anunnaki council deciding the fate of Anunnaki who killed the king, of which he was distant relative. It is decided that he should be given the throne. There is no punishment given for killing the king. Chapter 1.6 this tablet details how the king tries to heal the planet's atmosphere by detonating atomic bombs in Vulcanus. It does no good and the Anunnaki was displaced. The next person in the line for the throne challenged the king and defeated him in a wrestling match. The king escaped the Anunnaki by getting on a spacecraft and heading towards Earth. The second tablet of Lord Enki. Chapter 2.1 this tablet talks about the escape of the defeated king from Nibiru with the plan to go to snow-covered Earth. The spaceship he took had atomic bombs on it and his plan was to blow a path through the asteroid belt which had kept the Anunnaki from going to Earth. Chapter 2.2 It describes the arrival of the defeated king on Earth. Chapter 2.3 This tablet talks of the defeated king's initial days on Earth and finding the air, fruit and fishes. He also found traces of the gold that the Nibiru planet needed for repairing the atmosphere. He got in contact with the new king of the planet Nibiru and proposed a deal. The third tablet of Lord Enki Chapter 3.1 This tablet explains about the attempts of the defeated king to bribe the new king with his knowledge of the gold on Earth and have his status restored. Chapter 3.2 This chapter talks about the ending of negotiations. A team was to be sent to Earth to check if there was a large amount of gold present on Earth. If yes, then the defeated king was to be given another opportunity to win the throne of the king. Chapter 3.3 The following tablet has the Anunnaki traveling to Earth. 
They briefly stopped on Mars for water. Their spacecraft apparently runs on water. Then they proceeded to Earth and touched down here. Chapter 3.4 This part tells of the initial six days on Earth of the advanced team of Anunnaki. Plenty of food, water, fish and animals were observed by the advanced team sent by the Anunnaki. Chapter 3.5 This portion describes the Anunnaki team leader declaring the seventh day as a rest day. Metals were processed from the waters, the day, month, year were given their names. Chapter 3.6 This part of tablet tells about looking for and finding gold but not in great quantities. The remaining atomic bombs on the defeated King spacecraft were taken out of the spacecraft and hidden in a cave. They intended to deprive the defeated King of the use of atomic bombs to make a way through the asteroid belt. An Anunnaki team member left her to take the first basketfuls of gold to Nibiru, the fourth tablet of Lord Enki. Chapter 4.1 This tablet starts off with the arrival of the spaceship containing the first basket of gold. Word has received from Earth that the larger deposits of gold were underground. A high-ranking Anunnaki was placed in charge of the Earth operations. He left Nibiru and arrived on Earth. Chapter 4.2 This portion of the tablet has the Anunnaki coming to Earth to see for himself where the gold was supposed to be underground. A plan was made to decide which of his sons will go back to Nibiru and which one will stay and command operations on Earth. This was needed because of the enmity between his two sons for the next kingship. Chapter 4.3 in this part, the new king and his two sons were drawing lots to see what jobs will they perform. When decisions were announced, the defeated king retreated his case for the second wrestling match for the throne. The wrestling match ended with the Anunnaki beating the already once defeated king. When the match ended, the defeated king bit off the penis of the new king and swallowed it. He was tied and bound. While the new king was healing, the belly of the defeated king swollen from the semen of the king's penis. It was being decided what to do with the defeated king. The new king's son wanted to kill the defeated king. Chapter 4.4 This portion of the tablet has the new king deciding to place the defeated king who was expected to die from swallowing the new king's penis. It was decided to send him on exile to Mars while he died. The new king returned to Nibiru and made plans to harvest the gold on Earth. The plans included making relay stations on Mars and possibly the Moon. The Earth was again referenced as Eden. Chapter 4.5 This portion describes the building of specific Earth-moving equipment, spaceships and rockets on Nibiru for use on Earth. The Earth's shorter cycles and atmosphere affected the Anunnaki. A group of more Anunnaki including a few women with healing skills left Nibiru for Earth. They stopped on Mars to check if the defeated king has died and to start a relay station there. The rest of the group continued on to Earth. The Fifth Tablet of Lord Enki Chapter 5.1 This tablet commences with the latest group landing on Earth. The son that had been put in command for the gold harvesting greeted his sister, who was one of the healers. They flew off to the king's son's living quarters, which he built on a mountain. They expressed their love for one another and discussed their son on Nibiru wishing to come to Earth. They flew back to Eden and he flew her around, telling her of his plans. More and more Anunnaki arrived from Nibiru. Chapter 5.2 There were now 300 Anunnaki on Mars and 600 on Earth. This portion of the tablet talks about the same unsophisticated decisions and immorality by some of the Anunnaki. The king's daughter who is making love to the king's son was promised by the king's other son. When it was found that the other son and daughter had been sleeping together, the daughter was forbidden to marry anyone. The king's son that was making love to his sister raped a young female healer who was working under the command of the sister he had sleeping with. The king's son was exiled to a barren place on earth but the Anunnaki that took him to exile took him on purpose to a place where the seven atomic bombs were hidden extracted from the spaceship of the defeated king. The atomic bombs were hidden in a cave. Chapter 5.3 The rape young female healer was brought before the seven judges and she told them that she was pregnant. They asked her if she would accept the king's son who raped as her husband. She agreed to that. The exiled king's son was returned to Eden. The other king's son who was in charge of getting the gold from underground was living in that area of earth. His father, the king, had promised him his daughter for marriage, but instead he banished her from marriage. When it was found that she had his other son sleeping together, 
However, the king's son in charge of getting the gold asked her to join him in his dwelling. He and his half-sister had a newborn daughter. He wanted a son. She had another daughter. He cried out that he wanted a son, but she cursed him, an actual curse. He began suffering from terrible health problems. Only upon swearing to stay away from her vagina did she give him relief from her curse. She returned to Eden. He summoned his wife and child and Nabiru to come to earth. He had five sons by his wife and other Anunnaki women. The king's other son, after parting with his sister, raped a young healer and later married her. The king's son and his daughter, who had son on Nibiru, wished to bring him on earth, but he was now married and had a son with his wife. This set up rivalries between the king's two sons on earth, which led to war. The gold was transported to Nibiru and made into the fine dust, which was placed in the atmosphere. The atmosphere was slowly healing. There were now five Anunnaki cities on Earth. The Ijiji started to complain about the workload. The Ijiji on Mars were complaining the most. The commander of Mars was brought to Earth to show him the workings there. Chapter 5.4 This tablet talks about the commander of Mars was shown the workings on Earth. He secretly desired to be the king, so he stole the tablets of destinies from Eden. He believed that he cannot be defeated. He had the Tablets of Destinies, but he was defeated and sentenced to death. He died in the 25th Shar, approximately 90,000 years after the Anunnaki came to Earth. The Earth's Anunnaki leaders came up with a plan to refine the gold on Earth and only take refined gold to Nibiru in order to leave space on the craft for Ijiji to travel to Nibiru for rest. The King Agreed Chapter 5.5 the king's son in charge of mining diverted his attention to life and animals on earth and how it differs from Nibiru. The tablet mentioned that those animals in the tall trees used their front legs as handle. Other creatures were seen in tall grasses walking upright. The Ijiji in the mines rebelled. The king's two sons and others devised a plan to return to the rebelling Anunnaki to Nibiru and replace them with the new Anunnaki workers. They also decided to create a Lulu, a primitive worker. The sixth tablet of Lot and Key. Chapter 6.1 this tablet tells about the origin of the primitive worker. There was much discussion about forming a primitive worker. One of the king's sons stated that the father of all beginning has the sole power of creation. The king's other son stated that such being already exists and they would not be slaves but helpers. The king's other son said it is against the rules of the planet. He stated that it was also against the rules of even come to earth. After much debate, the king decreed the primitive slave to be created. It is believed by many that Anunnaki, especially the king's son in charge of mining, had created the mythical creatures of the old animals like dragons, mermaids, unicorns, etc. Chapter 6.2 In this portion of the tablet, it is stated that they took parts from the back of the animal and combined it with the front of another. In other words, they had been experimenting with DNA. This king's son had created creatures from DNA and violated the rules before the arguments and had begun to create primitive worker. Given the right to proceed by the king they tried and tried to mix the earth's two leg creatures DNA with theirs and place it in the two leg earth female creatures womb. There were many conceptions but the results were not good. Many creatures were created with deformities. Chapter 6.3 all attempts failed, but finally they decided to not impregnate on Earth two-legged female again, but an Anunnaki female. The Anunnaki female that had been doing the DNA splicing agreed to be impregnated herself. She conceived and gave birth to a boy child. She named him Adam. Then they decided to ask the young female Anunnaki healers from Nibiru if they would be impregnated. Seven of them volunteered. Chapter 6.4 the seven Anunnaki female healers were impregnated with a combination of the two-legged earth female creature and Adam. The seven gave birth to seven male children. Upon realizing the problem of the demand for Anunnaki women, they decided to make female children and let them procreate themselves. The wife of Anunnaki was asked and consent was given to impregnate. The birth was not normal, but the female child was good. Chapter 6.5 in this chapter, seven more females were created for the seven males. Adam and Eve were removed to Eden, and the seven males and females were placed in cages amongst the trees. The time for them to procreate had come and gone. No conceptions were given. Some DNA was taken from the king's son and the woman who was doing the DNA spicing and placed that in Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were then left to roam Eden as they pleased. Chapter 6.6 .6. 
In this part of the tablet, the king's son over Eden noticed Adam and Eve have left on them. He was upset and summoned the other king's son who was part of the creation to explain. The other king's son summoned his accomplices in the creation. They all explained the missing DNA which made the son in charge of Eden more upset. He had warned them of the folly. One of those in the creation stated that the Anunnaki long life was not given to them. The son in charge of Eden commanded them to take their creations out of Eden. Adam and Eve did not leave Eden because they ate the fruit of the forbidden tree. They were expelled because the Anunnaki scientists gave them the DNA to procreate and the commander of Eden was mad. Eve was not tempted. None of it was within Adam and Eve's control. The Seventh Tablet of Lord Enki Chapter 7.1 Adam and Eve were placed in an enclosure outside of the city of Eden. They bore many children. The Anunnaki now had three generations on earth. The Adams were working in the fields and mines. The gold was flowing. Earth was warming up. The condition was unfavorable. The snow was melting. The volcano eruptions shook the grounds. The Ijiji were complaining of high winds and dust storms on the Mars. The asteroid belt was in turmoil. On Earth, brimstones were falling. A large asteroid hit the moon. Chapter 7.2 In this portion, they contemplate abandoning the relay station on Mars. It had now been 80 showers or 288,000 Earth years. On Earth, Chapter 7.3 Since the Mars relay was to be abandoned, a new spaceship port was to be created on Earth for direct transport of the gold to Nibiru. The king came to Earth to see the newly created space port. Chapter 7.4 The division begins again between the king's sons and their offsprings, the primitive workers. They were given chores and jobs to do. In those days, grains and sheep were not brought to earth. The king's son that created mankind had a new scheme, but he noticed that mankind was reverting backward. Chapter 7.5 The king's son who created Adam and Eve observed them. One day he spied several young Eves and decided to impregnate them with his sperm. They gave birth. It was now the 92nd shower. 331,200 years, the Anunnaki have been on earth. The king's son was ecstatic about the birds and said that he created civilized men. He wanted this to be a secret. He told his visitor to secretly send the two children into his house and said they were found in reed baskets in the bulrushes. The king's son and his wife raised them. The king's son very deceitfully passed them off not as his offspring, but as a new, more intelligent generation of Adam and Eve's. He called for grains and ewes to be brought to earth so they may herd the sheep and harvest grain. Once the male and female children procreated, the king on Nibiru wanted the earthling male to come to Nibiru for a visit. The Eighth Tablet of Lord Enki Chapter 8.1 In the Eighth Tablet, out of the Fourteen Tablets of Lord Enki, the spacecraft came to pick up the male. The king's son sent his other offspring along to accompany the male. The king's son tricked the male by telling him not to eat or drink anything all his life as it was a poison which would kill him. The spacecraft left and they arrived on Nibiru. The king saw his grandchildren and an earthling for the first time. Chapter 8.2 The earthling was offered the long life bread and elixir to consume. He did not eat or drink. The king got offended and asked him that why did not he accept anything. He said that he will die. One of the king's grandsons gave the king a tablet given to him by his father as per his father's command. The king read the tablet and understood the earthling male was the offspring of his son. The king's son wanted the earthling to return to earth and it is his destiny to live and die on earth. The real reason the king's son did not want him to eat and drink the long life food was because of his concerns over many future kingship disputes since he was his son. The earthling and one of the two grandsons returned to earth. Chapter 8.3 The twin sons Cain and Abel were shown how to dig water canals and harvest grain while the other was taught how to herd sheep and spin wool. At the first harvest there was a celebration and the two twin earthling men made their offerings to the king's two sons. A celebration took place. Later Cain was unhappy that one of the king's sons did not praise him for his effort. Cain and Abel fight because of this and Abel was killed. Chapter 8.4 This portion of the tablet tells the story of the events after the killing of Abel. Cain was exiled. Chapter 8.5 This tablet tells in detail the teaching to the earthling offspring of the king's son. The teachings of other offsprings were also mentioned. The worshipping of the Anunnaki began. This was in the 98th shah 
or 352,800 years since the Anunnaki landed on Earth. In the 104th char, or 374,400 Earth years, the kingship lineage on Earth several generations down the line were still having babies with their half-sisters. Chapter 8.6 this tablet portion tells the story of the end of the life of the first earthling male that the king's son had made by Eve. The earthling male is referred to as Adam. He was born in the 93rd Shar and he died in the 108th Shar, making him 54,000 earth years old when he died. During this time, the Anunnaki and earthling humans would intermarry. The 9th tablet Anunnaki and Earthling would intermarry. Out of the 14 tablets of Lord Enki, the ninth one talks about the marriage of Earthlings and Anunnaki. Chapter 9.1 By this time, the Anunnaki and Earthling humans would intermarry. Due to the heat of the sun, there were hardships on Earth and Mars. One of the king's son's son wanted to marry an Earthling woman. There was an objection. The debate involved the statement that the kingship lineage marry half-sisters is a custom. The problem with marriage is the kingship lineage. If the kingship lineage marries an earthling woman, the king on Nibiru could eventually become an earthling. The king decreed that if the king's son's male offspring marries an earthling, he cannot return to Nibiru and his prince status ended. The king's son that is the commander of earth also stated that he and his new wife will not be able to stay in Eden. The king's son male offspring marries an earth woman. Chapter 9.2 200 of the Ijiji from Mars came to the wedding, unbeknownst to the leaders of the Eden. The 200 Ijiji from Mars had decided to abduct earthling women to be their wives. After the wedding, they did this deed. The Earth Commander, which had always been against the creation of mankind, was sorrowful that they had destroyed their original mission. Once the sacred mission was turning into an evil one, now the Earth was to be overrun by mankind. The king's son's male offspring that had just gotten married was basically banished to another land across the sea. There he invited the Ijiji that had taken earthling wives. The king's son that created mankind visited the new land often and watched and seduced the women. Chapter 9.3 But Sheba became pregnant and had a child. The first white-bodied, blonde-haired, blue-eyed earthling born in the 110th Shar or 396,000 Earth years after the arrival of the Anunnaki. There were plague and starvation on Earth. The Earth commander felt the Earth's mission had become perverted and hated the earthling mankind. The cries of the earthlings had become loud. So loud that the Earth Commander could not sleep, one Anunnaki wanted to teach the Earthling the art of healing. The Earth Anunnaki Commander said refused. Water would not come from its sources where the Earthlings lived. Vegetation did not grow. The Earth Commander forbade any teaching or help to the Earthlings. He wanted the Earthlings to perish. For one shar, the Earthlings ate grasses. This continued for about five shars. There were black spots on the sun. The savants on the Nibiru accounted planets moving during the next passing of the sun by Nibiru. Chapter 9.4 In this portion, the savants on Nibiru told the earth glaciers were melting and they would lose their footing. The sliding of the glaciers would produce a great wave that will deluge the land. Earth will be overwhelmed. The king on Nibiru declared to prepare Mars and Earth for evacuation. A head savant came to Earth with a message from the king. He informed them that the returning Anunnaki to Nibiru had become afflicted by becoming used to Earth cycles and not being able to adjust back to Nibiru's longer cycles. They died more quickly. One of the king's sons knew of this but the other king's son, who was the commander of Earth, was angry. He was angry that the Earthlings were becoming as them and they were becoming as Earthlings. He felt they were imprisoned on planet Earth and they have turned into slaves from masters. The Savant told them that they were supposed to remain on Earth. They were to go aloft in spaceships to wait out the calamity. The other Anunnaki were given the choices of returning or waiting out the calamity. The Anunnaki that married Earth women must choose between their wives and departure. This tablet implied that the Great Flood was a natural event in the Bible. God promised not to let mankind again be destroyed by the Flood. The Anunnaki were gathered together and told of the event to happen and their choices. Each decided to stay or leave. Chapter 9.5 In this tablet, it has been said that the Anunnaki have made their choices. 
Afterward, they inquired about the fate of mankind. The Earth Commander declared they shall perish. The Anunnaki shout back that they must not die. The Earth Commander admonished his brother that created them in the first place against his wishes. That he went behind his back and interfered with his own creation. The Earth Commander made each Anunnaki swear an oath. Assignments for preparations were given. Spacecrafts were assigned. The king's son that created mankind goes behind his brother back once again and decided to collect the DNA of the animals the earth rumblings through. The Tenth Tablet Aid from Noah Chapter 10.1 This tablet tells of the king's son that created earthlings. Dram that indicates him to inform Noah of the water disaster to come. Noah was to build a strong and credible boat to save his family in the coming flood. Chapter 10.2 Noah tricked people into helping him build a sturdy boat. On the sixth day, the navigator arrived with a box of animal DNA. The time of the great flood was 120 shar. Noah was 10 shar old. The deluge was a combination of waves and rain. It is conjectured that the waves came from the dislodged southern polar ice cap. There was heavy raining for days. This all came about by Nibiru in its orbit, passing close to Earth. Chapter 10.3 This portion of the tablet tells of the Great Flood and the settlement of Noah's boat on the mountain next to Ararat. The Anunnaki came back to Earth. The Earth Commander found Noah and was ready to kill his brother over his deceitful act. The only thing that left that was not buried in their cities was the landing pad for the spacecraft. Chapter 10.4 Upon the Anunnaki returning to Earth, they see utter devastation. Mars had lost its atmosphere and the water was dried up. On Earth, the Anunnaki organized and set chores to rebuild. Chapter 10.5 This chapter starts off by telling us that Nibiru had been damaged by the pools on Mars and Earth. The atmosphere in Nibiru had also been damaged. Nibiru needed more gold from Earth. Earthlings told that the king that no more gold can be mined. The mines are gone. But the Anunnaki surveying across the ocean found gold nuggets laying on the ground. He also found some of Cain's people had survived. Rebuilding and preparations for new landing pads were being done. Chapter 10.6 In this chapter, the place to land spaceships needed two mountains. No place was ideal enough. They built the pyramids as mountains for their spaceboat. Chapter 10.7 This last portion of the tablet has the Anunnaki once again being selfish, desiring power and title, they divided the lands among them. The 11th tablet, Chapter 11.1 For the next char, peace was kept, but it didn't last for long. One of the king's sons had two sons. One lived inland with his father and the other was living by the spaceport. The son by the spaceport became jealous and greedy. He thought his father would leave him and give his lands to the son that lived by him. So he and his wife planned to murder the brother so he would inherit the land. They gave a party and then his brother fell asleep from drink. They put him in a coffin and threw him into the sea. He was not found until he was dead. The grief-stricken wife vowed revenge and took semen from her dead husband and impregnated herself. She raised a son to do her revenge. The son grew and was trained. He raised an army. The day came and her son was hit with a poison dart. Chapter 11.2 In this portion of the tablet, her son defeated the uncle that killed his father. He had fallen on earth from his craft. He was blinded and his testicles were squashed. The council allowed him to live. The earth commander realized this was the first time an earthling raised an army. He surveyed his position of having space posts in place and on lands he did not control. He summoned his three sons and has built a spaceport unknown to the other Anunnaki. Another love interest has sprung forth. This time it was between descendants of each of the king's sons. All but one looked forward to it bringing peace. Chapter 11.4 Chapter 11.4 this portion explains some of the confusion of the last portion. The bride had gone to the underworld in search of the groom's body. The underworld in old times was the place of the dead. The two emissaries brought her back to life and proceeded to leave the underworld along with the groom's body. The bride wanted revenge and demanded the death of the groom's father even though he did not kill his son. The bride sought revenge by starting a war. It ended with the father of the groom trapping himself in a chamber of the pyramid. He had entombed himself and would die there if nothing had been done. His father made a deal where he would be exiled and gave up kingship lineage. Chapter 11.5 This portion dealt with rescuing the father from the chamber tomb and damage done inside the pyramid to the stones. Beams and Beacon 
The Earth Commander also reassigned lands. This brought up another question he had for his father, the King. The Earthlings were multiplying faster than the Anunnaki. How would the Anunnaki get the Earthlings to obey and serve them? The King decided to come to Earth one more time. Chapter 11.6 The Spaceship Beacon was relocated. The bride still wanted what land she would have if the marriage had been completed. Nothing was given to her. This brought up another question he had for his father, the king. The earthlings were multiplying faster than the Anunnaki. How did the Anunnaki get the earthlings to obey and serve them? The king decided to come to earth one more time. The Twelfth Tablet Chapter 12.1 the king decided to come to Earth. The rebuilding continued even though it had been too short since the flood. The lifting eye that scanned the lands, he lifted beam that penetrates all. It reminds me of the all-seeing eye on top of the pyramid like on a dollar bill. Chapter 12.2 This is the most interesting portion. The king arrived and the great feast was had by all. The king and his wife then slept for several days and nights. On the sixth day, the king summoned the two sons and daughters. They explained to him the layout of the new gold find and space pad, etc. Then they talked about the emissary he sent them before the flood. The one that came in a spaceship and talked with them about the flood and their life cycle change on earth, about how they would die if they returned to Nibiru. Then the same emissary appearing to one of the sons in a dream. The king treated that he did not send an emissary. They are all bewildered. Chapter 12.3 Many changes were made after the king's visit. Some reorganizing of the lands and a new approach to the earthlings. They were to be intermixed with the Anunnaki in the cities. They also were given a city of their own, with their own king appointed by the earth commander. A point system for the kingship and authority was devised and given. The bride still filled with revenge had demanded her own land. She made a scheme and directed into the grandfather of her dead groom. He was in charge of something called M.E.s. She made a plan to steal them from him. She arrived at his abode dressed scantily and seduced him with his song and wine. So far, he was falling for the deception. Chapter 12.4 the bride was caught but did not have the Emmys with her. The Earth Commander appeared to have stripped his brother of the responsibility. The brother's son back from the exile became very enraged. The Earth Commander uncle would not give him one. He took it upon himself and gathered some EGG to help him. They proceeded to build the Tower of Babel. At night, the Earth Commander's force destroyed it and scattered the people. He then gave each region a different language and alphabet to use. City kings came and went. The people sang songs about the bride who has now in charge of the Emmys. Chapter 12.5 The one exiled son of the king's son was given domain over a land. His brother lauded. For 650 earth years, they quarreled. The younger brother finally left at the insistence of the king's son. He left for the new land across the ocean. Interestingly, the once exiled son of the king's son that created the earthlings is now called Ra. Ra now replaced the face of the lion next to the pyramid with the sun's face. Reference to his younger brother were erased. There remained to be history in Egypt of this type of destroying the remnants of the old kings. The Anunnaki had an accurate system of counting by 60 Ra replacing it with counting by tens. Chapter 12.6 this portion of the tablet started out with the father giving Ra some M.E.s. He gave him all knowledge except how to revive the dead. A third region was established and the bride was given lord over it. The king's son she seduced and stole Emmys from now held Emmys from her. She needed to rule her and land with. Her land was also given a totally new language. The third region was not able to communicate because of the language and almost went to war over it. Trade did not happen because of the language. The third region did not blossom because of this barrier. The 13th Tablet Chapter 13.1 the third region did not blossom. The bride neglected her region. Other regions were not given to her. It was finally taken away from her. She was haunted by her dead groom. She built a house for nighttime pleasure. She tempted men to her bed and killed them. Gilgamesh was a king and desired a long life. He tried but did not attain it and died. Chapter 13.2 Ra was bothered by the ongoings of the bride. He was now preoccupied with attaining immortality. He instructed people to go look for gold. They invaded his brother's land and they became enraged. Ra wanted to rule the entire earth. The bride traveled and found people in the land she liked. Earthlings were taught the constellations. Chapter 13.3 
This tablet of Lord Enki tells about the earth enemies prepared for war, the bride and Ra. War began between the two king's sons' families. The earth commander had a dream with the same emissary as his brother's dream. Chapter 13.4 the war progressed and the son of the king's son who created earthlings was winning. He shouted out to the earth commander and his followers that he was the sole ruler and they should surrender. But the earth commander had an edge. He knew where the weapons of terror were hidden. He sent two to load them and use them simultaneously making sure the people were not harmed. Chapter 13.5 The weapons of terror were unleashed. It had been 1736 years since the flood. All was destroyed of raw forces and followers. Then the wind blew and evil dark cloud formed that killed all in its path. Chapter 13.6 This tablet is a continuance of the previous tablet. The 14th Tablet Chapter 14.1 This last table out of the 14 tablets of the Lord Anki has the tale of the king's two sons, Anki and Enlil flying around surveying the damage from the weapons of terror. The two brothers talked and discussed the meaning of it all. The kingdom that Ra desired so badly was now a wasteland. The earth commander told his brother that Ra can have whatever he wants. What he sowed, he can now reap. As for the earth commander, he was going westward to where the gold field was to complete the original mission. If you enjoy this video and want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to us and hitting the like button. Feel free to write a comment below and suggest which theory you want to see next. If you'd like to further support this channel, please consider joining. Our membership link will be found in the description box below. We appreciate your support and as always, thanks for watching.